Hey guys, um, thanks for watching this video. My name is Rick, uh, also known as at Twigcapper on Twitter. Uh, I'm going to talk about the 2015 Kentucky Derby contenders and pretenders. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, the past performances for each of these horses. I'm going to show you a video of the contenders and give you some pros and cons. I'm not going to talk about, <clears throat> I'm not going to talk in horse racing lingo. I'm going to talk in a way where it will be comprehensible for a beginner or an expert um, in horse racing. So let's get to it. On top of the leaderboard, we have International Star. Um, some pros, he's by uh, Fusaichi Pegasus. So that basically, uh, this this right here, Sire, just means that, that his dad is Fusaichi Pegasus. Uh, who won the Kentucky Derby several years back? Um, he won his last uh, his last three races, um, so that's good. These were lower class races; they're Grade Twos. Um, grade One races are the top races in the country, um, so that's good. He has the right running style. He's a closer. Closers usually do well in the Kentucky Derby. Um, one negative that I found here when he raced at Churchill Downs, he already has experience at Churchill Downs where that's where the Kentucky Derby is. Um, he was fourth and he didn't really look all that good on that surface. So um, if there's any negatives, that's one. And he also, when he, when he faced grade one competition, albeit he, it was on, on a turf race, he was ninth. So I don't see him winning, but um but I can see him coming in second, third at best. Um, so I'm going to show a quick video of the Lu Louisiana Derby, which is, which was his last race. <clears throat> so in this race, he uh, closes from sort of mid pack, and he's uh, he's trying to beat Stanford here. I like that. He was engaged with them in a dogfight, and he ends up winning this, winning this fight. So I like that he's gritty. He's a fighter. Cool horse. Not a not a win contender for for me, but I could see him um, being in the money. The next horse is actually my pick. His name's Dortmund. Uh, so some positives. He's by Big Brown. Big Brown. His dad was Big Brown. Big Brown um, won the Kentucky Derby in 2008. <clears throat> also, he's trained by Bob Baffert, which will, which is one of the better trainers in the country, maybe in the world. He's also won three Kentucky Derbies. And um, so a few positives. He's undefeated. He's uh, won two grade one races, which are the top class races in the country. And... Um, so he's beat Fireline, Firing Line, which uh, is a pretty good horse. He this horse went out, um, uh, raced in at the Sunland, raced in the Sunland Derby, and he won by like fifteen lanes. So that just kind of shows his class. And um, the video that I want to show here is is um, his, I think it's his second race. They flew him out to Churchill Downs. I'm kind of see if he would like the track. And I honestly think this is one of his better races. He breaks from the 12 post. He breaks from the far post out here. This is sort of what I think is going to be the ideal type of trip for him. I'm going to fast forward it because I'm trying to get a lot of information in this video. So this is Dortmund right here. He ends up winning this race. My feeling is that he's still a baby here, and uh, he kind of destroys his field. I really feel like he really likes this surface. So anyway, I'm going to get out of here, and then I'm going to show you the – this is another reason why I like I like this horse. 
This is the um, Robert see, Lewis stakes. I actually was here to to witness this race. Let's see if my internet will cooperate. Okay, so <clears throat> what I liked about this race was that Fiery Line, this other horse on the outside, goes past him, and a lot of horses, when this happens, they give up, and Dortmund here, he never quits, he's still coming at him, he's still coming at him, he's looking at him, and he's saying, no, hell no, and... Hmm. <clears throat> eventually he comes back and he wins this race so this just kind of tells me that either one firing line was getting tired or or he's a fighter or both so i think that i think this horse is gonna fight and that's why he's gonna fight anybody that's trying to pass him he's gonna fight him and try to come back at him so this is that's why he's my pick um I guess if you had to look at some negatives, um, his pedigree is pretty weak on his uh, his mother's side. His average winning distance of uh, of his mom's father, damn sire, is six point seven. So that's that's pretty weak. Um, then we have Carpe Diem, and. Carpe Diem. He is uh, one of the better bred horses in this in this field. He's by Giants Causeway, which was a really good turf horse and a really good long distance turf horse. He almost won the Breeders' Cup Classic at Churchill Downs, which is the distance of the Kentucky Derby, a mile and a quarter, and um, and then. His damn sire, a bridal song, is was a pretty good horse, and he also produces a lot of uh, a lot of uh, distance horses. He's a win contender, um, and he's the Kentucky Derby is going to be his third race, and this is a uh, this is what we call um, third off the layoff. It usually it's usually a pretty strong angle for horse players. Usually. Um, a horse's third start off a layoff is is sometimes their biggest their biggest race. So um, let's see. So he's pretty good. He's a two time Grade One winner. Um, the only negative is that he's trained by Todd Pletcher, and um, a lot of people will tell you that Todd is one of the best trainers in the country, and he is. He wins everything. Um, in New York and Florida, but he has a pretty terrible record in the Kentucky Derby. And I'm going to show you that record. I actually made a graph to kind of demonstrate his record. As one win, he's had 40 horses run the Kentucky Derby. As one win, two seconds, three thirds. But most of his horses finish somewhere in the middle here. He's had a lot of horses finish 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, a lot of them, a lot more finished towards the back of the pack too. So um, let me just show you a quick video of Carpe Diem. This is his last race at Bluegrass Stakes. This is Carpe Diem right here. I get a feeling this is a pretty weak race. He did look pretty good. Winning this race, though. It will be Carpe Diem rolling through Lexington and headed on for Churchill Downs. He okay, this is video two of the Kentucky Derby pretenders and pretend contenders and pretenders. Uh, I did the first three in the first video, and so we're going to talk about. American Pharaoh, 
he's going to be the favorite. Some pros. He's uh, his father was pioneer of the Nile, who was second in the Kentucky Derby, and then his father was Empire Maker, who also was second in the Kentucky Derby. So, so you know he's kind of bred for this for this race. Um, he's trained by Bob Bafford, which I already talked about how good of a trainer he is. Won the Kentucky Derby three times. He is a win contender for me. He's uh, he's the only horse in this field that's a three time Grade One winner. And um, he's kind of destroying his competition. He's won by four lengths, three lengths, six lengths, eight lengths. Nobody really is coming close to him, other than his, other than his, uh, than his first race. Nobody really has really challenged him, and uh, you'll see that in his. You'll you'll see that in his race here. Uh, this is the Arkansas Derby. And far right at the back, it's still Bridget American Pharaohs right here in the. He's here in second. Something interesting to note about this race is that uh, Victor Espinosa is his rider, and Victor Victor's already won two Kentucky Derbies, so you know he knows what he's doing. And um, he's been hot actually this these last last year and a half. He's been pretty good. Okay, look at Victor Espinosa. Okay, so Victor Espinosa in this race, he never pulls out the whip to, to whip him, to ask him to run faster. A lot of people are going to say this is ridiculous, but absolutely, if a jockey pulls the whip and starts whipping the shit out of him, he's going to run faster. Um, and he could have ran this race uh, faster, and he could have beat these horses in the back. Uh, by a wider margin. Uh, another thing that um, I noticed about this race is that before he gets to the wire, Victor looks kind of looks back and he says, well, there's nobody coming, so I'm going to start putting the brakes on him. And he did that with California Chrome last year too. He starts pulling the brakes before he even finishes the race to, just to kind of conserve him and, and um, you know, not, um, not make him work harder than he needs to. He also wins with his ears pricked. His ears up, so he's not being strained. He's not being asked. Uh, so let, let's finish this. American Pharaoh, breathtaking in a mesmerizing performance as he dominates the. So, some negatives. Just like Dortmund, he's uh, his mother's side is is a little a little weak in pedigree. He also has a dosage index of over four, which dosage is supposed to be this theory that um, is is supposed to tell us how far a horse will run. And um, in theory, he's not he's supposed to be he's not supposed to go a mile and a quarter, according to this this theory. Some people are going to discount this because other horses with a dosage in, index of over four have won the Kentucky Derby. So anyway, there's that. So, <clears throat> let's move on to Frosted. Frosted, I actually, I hate. I don't hate the horse, but but I hate I hate him as a contender. Several reasons: tap it. I don't I don't like tap it's. Um, uh, go on the model uh, in the Kentucky Derby, I should say specifically in the Kentucky Derby. Tap it. When he ran the Kentucky Derby, he finished like ninth, something like that. And that's where sort of his off offspring has finished, ninth and worse. Um, so another thing that I noticed here was that his only two wins in his life have come at Aqueduct. Well, this is the name of the track in New York. I kind of feel like this track produces pretty weak horses, to be honest with you. And this race in particular, the Wood Memorial, has produced has produced some um, pretty weak horses. They haven't even hit the board in like the last like 10 years. Actually, I don't know if that's true. I, mean, I may be making that up, but the point is that these horses have been pretty weak. Also, trainer is at 13% in great stakes, so that's that's a pretty low number. 13% for a high-profile trainer is not weak. And then he also got beat by Upstart twice, which I don't like either. Um, and I'll explain why later. I'm not even going to... Well, I am going to show that video real quick. So this is... 
Frosted is a length and a half behind him. He's been wide on both turns. Uh, Frosted is... Frosted is this horse out here with the white blinkers. This, this white looking mask thing. Okay, so... So this like huge bomb, this horse named Tencendo, which is also in the Kentucky Derby, I think it was like 20 to 1 or something. Frosted had to work pretty hard to beat this horse, this like huge bomb. So that just kind of tells me, I just, I'm very negative about, about this race. Okay, moving on. Move the hage. Okay, this this horse is very is very controversial in horse racing circles. A lot of people hate him, and the reason that they're saying that, well, one of the main reasons they say that this horse is going to suck is that is because he's coming from this race. It's called the UAE Derby, and no UAE Derby winner has ever won the Kentucky Derby or even come close. I think their best best record is like sixth. But when you really start looking at that history, you find out that you find out that um, there's only been four horses in the history of this race, four winners of the in the history of this race on dirt, specifically on dirt, not not Tapita, which was a distance for several years in at um, at Maidan. So there's only been four four horses, four winners that have come and tried to win the Kentucky Derby and they failed. They haven't been horrible. Um, they finished between like sixth and ninth, which is that's not good. But it's you know they beat a lot of our horses when they came. Um, so I think it's just too. Too small of a sample. The Wood Memorial has been much worse than the UAE Derby in the Kentucky Derby recently. So anyway, and oh, I, I wrote this here. Um, for some reason, a lot of folks were saying that a lot of like trainers like Bill Mott, I believe, and other other folks, other Americans that went to that went to uh, Dubai this year, they were saying that that surface, that new dirt surface that made down kind of compares to Churchill Downs. So that's got to be kind of good, right? That's if he's experienced with dirt that's similar to Churchill Downs, then I see that as a positive. Also, uh, Muktahij's uh, grandpa, his name was Dubai Millennium. He was a pretty good horse. He won um, the Dubai World Cup on dirt at a mile and a quarter, which is the distance and surface of the Kentucky Derby. This is one area where he really stands out. Um, his sire stats and dam sire stats, 8.6 and 8.8, .8 really stands out in this area. Basically, just means that he's bred to go long. Like he's not gonna have any trouble getting the distance, and it kind of shows you by his uh, his wins are um, his last two wins that are at a mile and three sixteenths, which is close to the Kentucky Derby distance. It's about a sixteenth of a mile short. <clears throat> um, so I like him. Um, also, he has a 114 Equibase figure, which is pretty close to what actually matches uh, Dortmund's top equi Equibase figure. And it's pretty close to um, Upstart and Materiality's figure. So, I'm just going to show you. Let's see. I'm going to show you quickly. Local time has the guinea safely sewn up. Uh, She's three lengths in front. Of good play. No, this is not what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you. I made Johnny be good, and Elder Jemel Faze had dropped out to be a long last of all. Has tapped that. So this is uh, this is Buktahij winning the. So this is video three of Kentucky Derby uh, contenders and pretenders. And this is Muftahij. I should explain that um, I didn't get to finish um, 
didn't get to finish showing you the videos for Moop to Heat, so I'm finishing up that thought here. Uh, this is the UAE Guinness um, at a mile. And Moop to is in the yellow silks here, and Muff Tool is in the blue. The reason I'm showing this this video... The reason I'm showing this video is because this is a this is a one of the last one of the only races recently that he's been in a fight and um, he lost that fight, but he he fought back. Um, well, Maftul, the horse on the outside, beat him. But um, what I like is he he was fighting like Dortmund. He was fighting until the end. So I kind of feel like. He's not, he's not going to be one of these horses that quits in the Kentucky Derby. He's going to fight. He may not win, but he's going to he's going to fight till the, the end. So I'm going to play this center. video. <clears throat> Matt Tool here was just just ran a huge race. He's more of a miler. This is more his distance. And Muftahij is more of a distance horse. So he gets beat, but it's a fight till the end. Him, but here's the post, and Maftul wins the 2000 guineas by a head. I also wanted to show the UAE Derby just to kind of uh, let's see, uh, come on, work. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try uploading this, see if this works. Really test themselves in this race, Moop Sahij is in close to the rail here in yellow. Not sure what's going on with the internet connection. Come on. Okay, so. Apologize for the technical difficulties. Here we go. So I'm just going to let this play out. Um, one thing that I didn't mention in the previous video was that uh, Mike DeCock has a pretty good record coming to America. He actually won the... 2013 Arlington Million with the horse named Apache, and he got DQ'd. But whenever he comes, whenever Mike DeCock comes, he's usually second, third, in top class races. So um, he's a good trainer. So this is where Mubtahe just kind of explodes from the field. And I like that you see that he's getting better as distance go on he actually looks like his grandpa dubai millennium here so he wins this race pretty easy so you know he's going to be the dis get the he's going to get the distance i like him i i may use him on top and in the win spot just to be safe just in case this he's a freak um i do like other horses better than him but but i think he is a win contender okay let's move on Okay, materiality, materiality, I, I absolutely hate. He has big speed figures, but look at his past performances. He's He has three races, and uh, the fourth race is going to be uh, the Kentucky Derby. A big, a big negative here is uh, the Curse of Apollo. If you don't know about the Curse of Apollo, it's just, it just sort of this... Um, it's just sort of this... Uh, um, this idea that a horse needs experience at two years old um, in order to have that foundation and, and, um, and experience to win a big race like the Kentucky Derby. So nobody in over 100 years, no horse has won the Kentucky Derby without, um, without racing uh, when they're two years old. So he, this is going to be one of those horses that's just like a Verrazano uh, a few years ago that 
I don't expect to be there at the end at all. Another negative is Pletcher, and I, I've talked in other videos why that's a negative in the Kentucky Derby. He has a very poor record. If you wanted to, uh, a few positives, he's by Felipe Alex, which was he was a really good horse. He could have won the Triple Crown. Um, he came third in the Kentucky Derby and then won the Preakness and Belmont Stakes. And um, he is a Grade One winner. He won the Florida Derby. I just, I think this, um, the Florida Derby horses are pretty suspect. Oh, well, actually, I think they're good, but not, not. I don't like them in the Kentucky Derby this year. All right, El Kabir. I, I, I kind of like this horse, but his last effort was so bad. And once I start looking at his PPs. I look at his grade one races in the Champagne. He was fourth by 17 lengths behind the winner. In the Wood Memorial, he's third, five lengths behind the winner. Um, and then when I look at the type of races that he's winning, they're mostly grade one, grade three races. So these are, maybe that's that's just what he is. He's a grade three horse. He's not a grade one quality horse. And um, even his... Even his owners didn't think he was uh, really a Kentucky Derby quality horse. He does have a win. If, you, if you're looking for some positives, he does have a win at Churchill Downs. But when you start looking at this race more closely, at a mile and a 16th, he was getting pretty tired at the end. And, you know, you can see that he won. He barely won by a head. So I don't see it. He's going to be a huge price, but I just, I just don't see it. Not even going to show a video of it. It's not really worth it. Upstart, this is a horse that a lot of people are going to like. A lot of people are going to use. And I actually liked them before I disliked them. The reason why is because I think he has a bounce pattern. And for those of you that are sort of new to the sport, a bounce just means that when there's an unusual um, top effort, it um, usually followed by a regression in performance, similarly to a basketball team that scores 150 points. Like, there's no way they're going to score 150 points the next um, the next race that they're going to regress to the mean to what they average out. And this horse doesn't really necessarily follow that specific pattern where he's ran a huge race. But look at look at uh, look at his figures. These are these bold uh, numbers here, those are his speed figures. They just they basically just assign a um, a number, which is sort of just a um, the speed figure makers give the horse an assessment of how fast they ran that race, making adjustments for the speed of the track. So on. I don't want to get into it, but just sort of explain that to anybody that's in, that's new. So. <clears throat> he has this wild, wild swings and speed figures. He runs a really uh, a poor race, speed figure wise, and then a huge race. Then he runs a poor race, followed by a huge race. And a poor race is coming up next in the Kentucky Derby. So he has a good, bad race pattern. Um, and he seems to be always short in the, at the grade one level. He's not a grade one winner yet. In the Champagne, he was second. Juvenile, he was third. Derby, he was Florida Derby. He was uh, he was second. Um, also, I'm not going to show them, but the last three races, um, the last three races after the wire, he kind of looked dead tired. He looked spent, and I just kind of feel like he's not going to go the distance. Although. Based on this on this pedigree, he should. Um, these are some very impressive. Um, AP Indy was a very good horse. Um, Touch Gold was pretty good too. I think he won the Belmont Stakes as at a mile, mile and a half. But anyway, I don't like him. Okay, this is video four. Kentucky Derby Pretenders and Contenders 2015. I'm hoping I can finish this um, in this video. So I'm going to talk really fast. Most of these horses 
are not going to win. So I'm not going to spend too much time with them. Let's get to it. <clears throat> so we're at far, far right. He's a pretender. I, I feel like he was exposed at the grade one level in the Arkansas Derby. He was second by eight lengths behind the winner, American Pharaoh. So he was really nice at the, you know, when he was facing grade three quality horses. It's pretty good. He was winning at Oakland. Um, but he's not, he's not grade one quality. Also, um, not really big on the pedigree. The sire stats are, he's not really supposed to go this distance. And when I looked at his, he has experience at Churchill Downs and that's good. He has a win at Churchill Downs. I just don't feel, he has the right running style. I just don't think. I don't think he has a chance, to be honest with you. And he's going to be a huge, he's going to be a huge uh, long shot, and a lot of people are going to use him. And no, I can see him maybe finishing fourth in the Super Effecta, but he's not a win contender at all. It's a knockout. Is one of these, one of these top Fletcher horses that's going to finish. That's going to finish close to the end. Um, I'll go back to this. Um, oh yikes. Okay, let's bring this up. We'll go back to this graph <clears throat> that shows Todd Pletcher's record in the Kentucky Derby. I'm not sure what's going on with this. Okay, so it's a knockout. This is where Todd Pletcher's horses have finished in the Kentucky Derby. It's a knockout's going to finish back here in the end. If he's lucky, he'll finish in the middle. Okay, so his last race was horrible. He's light on experience. There's no reason to think this horse has a ch has a shot. Fiery Line is an interesting horse. Um, so the negative is that his father was Line of David, and he was horrible in the Kentucky Derby when he ran. Lionheart ran a pretty good race. His grandpa, um, he he was he was on the pace. In the Kentucky Derby that he ran, he got beat by Smarty Jones that year. Um, so his pedigree is not horrible, but he's he's supposed to be more of a sprinter. He is, in my opinion, he's at, he has too much speed for his own good. And what I don't like about him is that he's he's challenging too early. He's not he's not rating. He's, which means uh, basically just kind of controlling the speed and sitting back from the really speedy, fast horses in the front. Sometimes he's in the front too early, and I don't think that's going to serve him well. You know, he's going to run a big race. He's going to be one of these horses that's um, turning for home. You're going to see his face. He's going to be one of the top three four horses that are turning for horn but he's he's turning for home but he's gonna he's inevitably gonna get past I don't see him I see him finishing maybe third at best he's a pretty cool horse though here's the Sunland Derby I'm gonna show this real quick he ends up winning this race by like 15 lengths I hope this plays so here's firing line I'm gonna fast forward through this firing line is gonna just go around like a hand canter and hits the Kentucky with so much promise full of ammunition firing line by so he won by a wide margin but he is facing some very weak horses. This may actually just sort of mean, just sort of um, be a reflection on how good Dortmund has been because Dortmund has beat him twice. So he's a pretty cool horse. I just, I don't see him winning at all. Dancing Moon, I'm not going to spend too much time on this horse at all. He's a plotter. He ran the best race of his life in his last start. He was second to Carpe Diem. He's not going to win. A war Story. War Story is actually interesting. I've never really been a big fan of this horse. But <clears throat> he's one of those bombs that 
is interesting to me. He's going to be a huge, huge long shot, maybe 40, 50 to 1. And I've kind of noticed this pattern. The bombs that have come in recently in the Kentucky Derby, commanding curb, um, uh, Golden Soul, <clears throat> the past few years, they had similarities. And, and those similarities were that they were both, they had both won at Churchill Downs or had a really good race at Churchill Downs. They uh, were both closers. And uh, closer just means that they're horses that come from the back of the pack and do all of their running towards the end. And and they were both coming from the Louisiana Derby. They didn't win. They were like third or fourth. But they had a decent race. And, you know, with more speed, with more speed, um, they may... They may finish well. I'm going to show, and this horse has those same three qualities or characteristics. He has a win at Churchill Downs. He was closing. I'm going to show that real quick. Uh, let's see. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. Okay, so here is War Story is 8. If you can see my arrow, you don't even see him on the screen yet he's number eight he's way back here but watch this move so he's coming there is he's coming there's the eight so he's making this huge move he's over here now comes what comes wide so if this was the kentucky derby this is where a lot of the horses start hitting the wall start getting tired i could see him maybe <laughs> Being like a commanding curve, a golden soul, and at this point, picking up a few horses and maybe finishing fourth, third. Could be. He's probably not. Not He's not at this class level, but that's why he's going to be a huge, that's why he's going to be a huge uh, um, long shot. It's possible. If there's going to be a huge, huge bomb that sort of hits the board, that's fourth or third, I think it's going to be this one, the war story. Okay, Tensendor. Tensendor, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about this horse. This horse has no shot whatsoever. He ran the rest of his life last. He will, will not repeat it. Um, one lucky Dane, I... Just found out today that he's I, something went wrong in his workout and he's not going. Stanford is not going to spend a minute talking about this horse. He's another top pledger that's going to finish towards the back of the pack. Mr. Z, oh god, Mr. Z. He no, he's he's more of a miler. He's he's going to hit a wall sometime between a mile and a mile and an eighth. He's has no shot. Ocho, ocho, ocho. Um, the good thing is that his father was Street Sense, and Street Sense won the Kentucky Derby. But he doesn't have a real shot. He's a cut below most of these. Um, his trainer's record is pretty poor in graded stakes. Third off a layoff is pretty bad. The only positive is that, well, you know, he won this, the Delta Jackpot. But that's probably a weak race. All right, let's see. Where are we at? Bolo. I was actually pretty high on this horse, but he's not He's not a dirt horse. He is a uh, turf horse, and he should go back to turf. He, he's, he doesn't like the dirt. His class made him finish third in both of his last races, but he's not. Made from Lucky, a tough pletcher again. Basically, you toss all the top Fletchers, except for Carpet Diem, maybe. Uh, Keen Ice, a lot of people are going to like this. This horse is really, really slow. He has a win at Churchill Downs, but 